All right, welcome to the first in our video series on Power Automate approvals, where we're going to talk about the basics. So kind of why we want to use approvals, what they are, and how we, you know, what they look like to folks. Uh, so first off, why use approvals? Well, almost every business process that I've worked on involves some type of approval. Not, maybe not almost every, but a lot of them. It's a 60 to 70 percent involved somebody being asked some question and having to make a decision whether it's um, approving a business expense approving a leave request vacation day etc um, whatever the scenario somebody is being asked to make a decision and approvals are a really fantastic way of handling those decision oriented processes because it makes it easy for folks uh, which brings us to point two you want the approver so whoever is being asked to make those decisions should have a convenient and consistent experience so again regardless of the scenario whether they are requesting a business expense or a leave request you want the the experience the interface to be similar you want to be familiar to them uh, so the first time somebody you know, may, gets an approval and has to act on it, it might be new to them. They may not, may question what it is and how it works. But once they've been through it and once they've seen that, the next time they get one, they're like, oh, I recognize this. This is an approval. I need to click approve and then enter my comments and send it off and it's done. So it is a very convenient and consistent experience. Uh, especially when the approval is created and, and configured properly and we'll get to that in a future video so we want to make this process as simple and, and consistent for folks as possible uh, and also we understand that you know there are so many different kinds of power automate flows because there are very different processes uh, and each of those different processes are going to require different actions based on the decision that's made so and and maybe even some logic is going to be involved in deciding who the approver will be maybe if it's a business business expense up to a certain amount it goes to one person if it if it is beyond that amount it goes to somebody else so you can build that kind of logic into your power automate flows so rather than building out separate approval processes for this business expense versus that business expense you can build one that acts conditionally and sends it to the appropriate party based on the amount being requested so you have that flexibility of building different processes using the same framework of the approval now in terms of what an approval actually is in power automate um, when I have this conversation, I tell folks it's a transactional object, and, and that sounds fancy. It sounds like I'm trying to, to make it sound more complicated than it really is, but I've kind of explained this as, well, there's a transaction occurring. You're asking somebody to make a choice. So when you assign an approval to someone, you're saying, hey, this request has come in, or this person is asking for this. Do you approve it? Do you reject it? And even in other scenarios where maybe it's not an approval or rejection it's a you know providing feedback like yes I agree to this or no I don't you're asking them for some to to, to commit some kind of transaction uh, some kind of decision based on that data and that's really what it is it's it's an object that people have to you know, presents people with choices and they make a decision that object is going to be assigned to one or more individual users in a tenant. Now, technically, there are ways to assign. Uh, you can assign approver, approvals to external guests who are, you know, registered guests in your tenant. We're not going to get into that in this series. Just know that it's possible. Um, maybe if we have time, we'll talk about that in more detail later. But we're going to keep it simple at least first time through and just stick with. Uh, users inside your own tenant because that is definitely this more simple scenario now a really important fact is that when an approval is assigned to somebody the only person who can approve or reject that or or you know whatever the choices are uh, the only person who can act on it is the person to which it's assigned uh, meaning that 
either they are signed in to their account and making that decision or somebody else is using their credentials or using their device maybe to make that decision. But the point is, is, is that this is a secure process. Uh, it's not just a matter of like going to a SharePoint list and toggling a field value from pending to approved or pending to rejected. It's a, again, a transactional object. It's something that they receive that they have to act on. And once they make that decision, then the rest of the flow continues. But only the person to whom it's assigned can make that decision. Uh, you can provide instructions and context for the decision. So in other words, uh, if you've ever worked with approval flows in um, approval workflows in say SharePoint 2010 or 2013, um, you could kind of create this approval and it created a task that was assigned to that person and it had kind of that same security to it where only the person to which it was assigned could approve it or accept it or reject it. Um, but it was kind of convoluted. Uh, you didn't have a good interface for providing them information. They had to either click on a link in the message to go to that task, and the task was in an info path form, which didn't always render properly in different browsers. Um, but it was just, it was a convoluted process and wasn't always clear what people were approving or how they had to go about approving it. The point is that in an approval, you have a, the, the template provides a details field where you can spell out exactly what information that approver needs to make their decision. Uh, and that is something that I always do. A lot of people kind of overlook that details field because they'll say, well, I'm going to attach a document or I'm going to include a link. Um, the more information you can give them, the more context you can put into that body of the the approval message itself the less you have to rely on things like attachments or links because once you send them an attachment and, and kind of add that hurdle or that obstacle of opening this attachment you're making it less convenient so if you want the ideal in terms of convenience include the details include all of the relevant details in that details field uh, you can use the, the standard choices are approve and reject, but you can also use your own custom values. You can define up to five different custom values. So uh, maybe the it, it, you're using an approval to collect orders for um, new office chairs, and there are four different colors. You can give make those colors the choices. So let's say you know red, blue, green, or yellow. Um, so you can define those different choices based on what your scenario is, what your requirements are. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility there. Uh, you can also attach files. So you can, I, and I know I just said that you should include that information in the details field, but sometimes you can't. If it's something like an image or, you know, if there's a, you know, a 20 page contract is, and that's what the person is approving, it's more logical to add that as a file attachment as long as it's under 50 megabytes total file size you can add those file attachments um, and then there are also flexible condition uh, completion conditions so when you're deciding on the choices approve or reject or some other custom value you're also deciding is this going to be is this approval going to be complete when the first person responds so the first you know, basically first person to respond, their choice wins. Or do you want to wait for everybody that, that it's assigned to, to weigh in, and then it will be sort of a unanimous thing, or, you know, essentially any one of them rejects it, it's rejected. So they all need to approve in order for it to be approved. So you have a lot of flexibility in, in how those completion, you know, what what makes this um, this approval process complete. Uh, so that, that that's kind of what an approval is. Now, when you're actually creating an approval in a Power Automate flow, this is the kind of the standard. This is what most people think of and the action that most people use and the action that's used in most of the approval templates out there, which is the start and wait for an approval. Now, in the next video, we're going to go into more detail on the different actions and kind of how they, you know, how they 
differ in the way they work. Uh, but for right now, let's just say that this is the action you're going to use. So first off, you define what kind of approval. So in this case, we're saying first to respond, and it's simple approve and reject. In the title field, we're giving it a name. So that's going to show up in the email message as a, you know, a description of this approval. We're assigning it to somebody. We're adding in the details field some, you know, a message for that person. Uh, you also can can include a link to something. So if this were a, a link to, you know, let's say there's a, a SharePoint list item or a document in a SharePoint library, and you want to include that in a link to that in this approval message, you can. It is kind of important to understand that if it's something like a SharePoint list item or a SharePoint library, if the person doesn't have permissions to it, then that link's not going to work. We'll get to that a bit later. Um, just something, a factor to consider. And then there's a requester field. So you can specify who the who is requesting this approval. Um, if it's not you or the person who's creating the flow, you want to define who the requester is. And then there's some other fields where we can enable notifications and reassignment and then add attachments. So that's kind of the gist of the, you know, how we define the approval. Uh, now, based on this approval definition, this is the email message or the approval message that people actually receive, that the approver gets. Uh, so it's very clear. Now, I don't love the fact that it still comes from Microsoft Flow. Uh, eventually, Microsoft will replace or will rename that account and will say something like Power Automate, using the proper name for it. Um, but they're always going to come from that. And they're always going to have this header of approvals power automate so that's clear to folks that that's what this is again the first time they see this it might seem unusual might seem suspicious or something but once they've seen it once or twice it's going to be familiar and they're going to recognize that oh that's what this is i need to click one of those buttons then we have the title of the approval we can see who it was requested by, when it was requested, and then this is the message that I included when I launched that flow. Um, and then we have very clear call to action buttons. So we have approve and reject, and when you click one of those, you're going to see another field show up that says, you know, that asks for comments or details or reasons, whatever it is. And then there's a submit button so that they can act on this. And again, this is why it's important to have uh, the relevant details, whatever they need to make that decision in this message, in that details field, um, so that they can make the choice here, choose a button, submit it, and be done. Uh, once you send them some somewhere else, then if you know if you want to send them somewhere to look at something and expect them to come back to the their email, uh, some people are just not going to come back to that email because it's it's a hassle. They'll either say, well, I don't really care, and they'll approve it or reject it without going there, or they'll go there and forget to come back to the email, and next thing you know, it's, you know, the, the, the approval times out. Uh, so the point is that it's a very clear, consistent experience to the person who's receiving the approval, um, so they know what to do when they see this message. So that's all I wanted to go through in this first video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take a closer look at the different actions in the approvals connector. So we'll talk about that start and wait for an approval and creating an approval and kind of when to use which one.